Okay. Uh, hey, everyone. This is the 215 session Medio Ecosystem in Drupal 8. Uh, it was labeled double header uh, on your on your session, so I hope you're in the right place. Um, yeah. Uh, so we'll go ahead and get started. Um, doo -doo -doo. And just kind of a little bit about who, uh, who we are. Uh, do you hear me? Yeah, you do. Um, my name is Yanis. Uh, I'm I'm working at Examiner at the moment. Um, I started with Drupal uh, by coincidence because a friend of mine was working at this international tennis tournament, and he was like, um, "I need a website, and you can do it." And I was like, "Sure, I can," but I've never done one before. Uh, and that's how I found Drupal, and uh, I've been happy member of Drupal community since then. Uh, I'm also maintaining discuss module, blah, plot module. I was a student for Summer of Code. Um, now I'm mentoring. And uh, yeah, that's it. And uh, my name's Dave Reed. Um, uh, IRC, Drupal, all is my same name if you need to find me. Um, I work for Lullabot as a senior developer right now. And I've been involved with Drupal for over nine years now, which feels like a really, really long time. Um, I've been involved with uh, lots of modules. I'm typically known as the module guy. Um, and I apparently like to take on really hard problems and not ever give up. Uh, so that's why I'm involved with Drupal Media. Um, so I've been working on this for like the last four or five years now. And it feels like it's, it's, it's been a really long fight. And there's been a lot of great people helping along with this. Um, including my co-presenter. Um, but uh, now we're kind of to starting to take a turn towards Drupal 8, and we're gonna, this is what we're going to talk about. So, All right. Um, so just to kind of have a brief, why is media important in Drupal? Um, I mean, I'm pretty sure we all kind of know this section just because it's, it's a really important feature. Um, people expect that we get this done right because they want this all the time. Um, our competitors, such as WordPress uh, or other systems, um, they have this out of the box and they do it pretty darn well. And so Drupal kind of usually tends to take a, a negative checkbox uh, when doing a comparison to other systems with this uh, for media and asset handling. Um, and that those people are enterprise clients, too. Those are big clients. Those are big people we could have on Drupal. Um, I would hate for media to be the reason why those people don't pick Drupal. Um, so it's why we need to keep moving forward and get something, get a good solution going. Um, people use media a lot, surprisingly. I don't know why this happens, but people like pictures and video and audio. So people expect to be able to use this on their site. So it's kind of a critical thing, you know, along with content creation. Um, so we need to get, it needs to happen. And you know, people that actually do the content creation on the site, you know, they don't want to be too burdened by the workflow. It needs to be an easy workflow. Uh, it needs to be something they can understand as well. And just kind of to encompass that all, we need to handle the media itself well. We need to treat it uh, like a first-class citizen. Um, you know, make sure we're allowing f some you know people to add metadata about the the media as well. Um, all those kind of good things. And, and of course, uh, the great quote by Dries, um, if I could snap my fingers and add one single feature to Drupal core, it would be good media handling. And he said that in Portland. And he said it for like every DrupalCon before then and after then, too. Um, so it's always been like high on the list. Yeah, so Drupal 8 is approaching beta. And uh, we, we, we should have something in Drupal 8, right? Because, you know. Features that were added were added, and we're basically done with that. Um, oh, thanks. So yeah, we actually have a few things in Drupal 8 um, that improved in core. One of them is uh, file listing that is there by default. Um, it looks similar to content listing. It tells you which files you uploaded through image and file fields, and where are those files used. So you have kind of a track. Uh, what's going on. Uh, you can do much more with it, but it's a view, so it's, it's extendable, uh, which means we can extend it in Contrib, or you can extend it for needs of your site, something like that. 
Um, another thing is um, with the WIG integration, uh, we can actually add inline images to WYSIWYG now. Uh, it works great, support captions, alignment, um, and uh, yeah, but the only downside is it can only embed images. You cannot embed a video or something else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, it uses this data attributes, and then when uh, an entity is saved, it checks all the body, like, text area fields and looks for these data attributes. Um, and third thing is multi-upload by default. Um, we added like bound multiple uh, attribute to file and managed file form API elements. So you can use multi-upload in your own forms. And of course, then we also implemented it for image and file fields. Uh, if you have a multi-value file field, you can now just go and select more than one file and it should work. Uh, it uses HTML5 multiple attribute, so it won't work on uh, beloved browsers of older versions. But it still degrades gracefully to single upload, so it still works. Yeah, so uh, a little bit of history. Um, a DrupalCon Prague that happened last autumn uh, we had a core conversation and a sprint where we started to discuss how media in, in, in Drupal 8 should be approached. Yeah, um, so th it was a, a, a more like a planning sprint. We didn't produce any code. We just came up with a plan. Um, <coughs> and like five simple bullet points of this plan would be we need to focus on ease of use. Um, we should support multi-upload by default. We should have nice WYSIWYG integration, uh, maybe drag and drop, things like that. Um, we decided to go with pluggable framework because uh, in Drupal 7 now we have like several media solutions and none of them like integrate between each other, which means that we have to re-implement a lot of code several times. If we would have a pluggable framework where these different media solutions could pick these components and use them, uh, that would help a lot because we would develop like code that does something just once. There would be no need to write redundant code. And uh, it seems that doing a pluggable framework of the coupled components uh, would help us to solve that. Um, of course, one of the problems in D7 was that like, pretty much solid solutions came out very early in the D7 life cycle. So uh, we should probably fix that and deliver at least basic components very soon in D8 life cycle. And uh, actually decoupling things should help us with that because we will be able to bring on board all the developers of different solutions that were competing before to work on these same components. And this way, we will hopefully get more resources to work on this. Um, and of course, APIs in D8 are much, much more pow powerful there than in D7. And we want to use uh, existing tools as much as we can because that means less work for us, um, better integration with some other solutions that might appear during life cycle. Um, so, yeah. Uh, and the last step that was decided in Prague is that um, we should go with non-file-centric storage component. Uh, I've tried to explain that. <laughs> 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 so, in D7, we have two approaches, basically, how we store files. Um, one approach is file entity approach, which takes cores, uh, files, which are actually entities, but probably not many people know that they are, and extend it to be a real entity with fields and everything. And the other approach, which is also, it, it is implemented right now in some D7 solutions, is to go with some um, other entity that doesn't, uh, doesn't assume that everything will be local file because a file is 
tied to file managed table and it has to use wrappers. And uh, some people think that this is not very convenient for remote media like YouTube videos and Vimeo and stuff like that. Some people. Some people. Some people. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, this was the decision. And uh, yeah, I will head the pointer back to Dave. So it was, it was kind of interesting because I, I did not get to attend DrupalCon Prague. So it, it was, you know, I had uh, an interesting viewpoint being able to follow what kind of what was going on from the sideline. Um, and and the, the team that was there kind of had this perspective of, you know, if we could start over from fresh, what would we do? I think that's kind of a, a, a good perspective to take. Um, uh, especially whenever you uh, introduce a new Drupal major version, uh, especially if you're like on Drupal 8, uh, which has all these new things and great things. Um, uh, my perspective comes more along the lines of working uh, with the file entity and media modules for such a long time. I think they're a great solution and solve all these problems. And, you know, we wanted to, we had this plan to continue porting them to Drupal 8. We didn't really have, you know, anything too well structured. Um, but we kind of wanted to go with it. But we also recognized that um, we were not doing some things ideally. So we wanted to take a look at some things that we wanted to fix um, and use the Drupal 8 uh, cycle as an opportunity to fix them. Um, I mean, first off the bat, we don't have a stable 2.x release of media module. So like, how can we start porting something if we don't even have it officially released yet? Um, it's just kind of a big community pressure there. Um, WYSIWYG has always been kind of a big issue for media module because we have to support the WYSIWYG module or CK editor or uh, tiny MCE or any kind of various, uh, you know, a WYSIWYG that comes up uh, or is integrated through the WYSIWYG module. Um, and that tends to be very problematic and we're using, you know, a special syntax to embed the, the media which doesn't exactly work because it's not actually HTML um, and there's just lots of issues going on there. Um, I would describe it as overly complex out of the box. That can be seen as a good thing or a bad thing. Um, you know, I think probably the thing that we struggle with the most is configuring how to display the files um, with the media module. That's kind of our biggest step. Um, and that always seems to get people hung up. But like, once you understand that, it makes, it, you can see how complex and powerful it is too. You know, we don't, we don't know how that goes any, with any other modules like views or panels either. Um, and media tends to have an uphill battle against core assumptions. Like, core assumes that files are used only once, they're locally uploaded files, and that's it. Um, but we wanted to reuse that because it already kind of provided this framework for us to extend. Um, core doesn't sometimes like to have things extended that way, so that's kind of where things happen. Um, you know, making sure that we have multiple uploads, the multi-upload workflow kind of in, in enhanced everywhere. Um, right now it's kind of like, you know, it's it's single upload, but if you have the plus upload module and the multi-form module, then you can do multiple uploads and multiple editing, but does it work properly all the time? That kind of thing. So, like, we're having to battle two different workflows there. Uh, we've had to battle accessibility, making sure that we support alt and title tags properly with images and, and content all the time. Um, that's always a hard one to think. Um, and again, it comes, it comes down to usability versus extensibility. Like, it's a very, very tough line to walk, um, especially for such a large module like this. Um, and we have a problem figuring out what that balance is. Um, and, you know, sustained maintainership. There are lots of really great maintainers for the module. Uh, some of them are in this room, Devin, um, who have really do a great job keeping it going, but it's really hard because it's still a volunteer effort. Um, I know Acquia does put some time into it uh, with their comments and demo teams, uh, which has been very helpful. Um, but there's no like lead driver of it, and it kind of just is when people have the time to fix it. Um, so that is kind of a, a, tr a trouble for us right now too. But it's also been three, four years in the making, and those people are kind of tired of so trying to fix the same thing. Um, so yeah, and there's more. I make it sound really, really bad, um, but really it's a good module, and I swear. Um, <laughs> I just tend to be a pessimist, that's all. Um, so I kind of put together this document where we'd kind of, okay, here's all the problems we're facing, here's how we can maybe start tackling them for Drupal 8, and I kind of shared it with some of the other maintainers, um, you know, 
with Drupal 8, we can kind of focus on involving this better workflow from day one, involving accessibility from day one, um, kind of splitting up the file entity module so that maybe files don't have to be fieldable by default. It just, it may be that's something people can optionally enable if they want it. Um, and it kind of has the same theme as what the prog team did, you know, decoupling and kind of making sure that these features are more abstract and can be reusable. Um, where with the media module, we kind of had these two big modules that did it most of the work. Um, so we wanted to kind of split that up. And so that's kind of where we were looking at and we didn't really have any progress to show for that yet, but that's where we were headed. Um, so after the Prague uh, sprint, there was a, a GDO post put out where they were like, okay, here's what we want to do. We want to have this, this separate media entity and it doesn't have to be a file and here's our proposal. And you know, I'm gonna be admit that uh, as a file entity maintainer, I didn't take it well. Um, we were we were respectful, but we were very disagreeing on how that should move forward. And we tend to get, I think we got a little bit muddled in the, like the very details. Like, no, there should be files. No, they should be separate media entities. And like that was really the gist of our argument. Um, it was a huge thread, and it seemed stuck. Yeah, so they kind of stuck our progress for a little bit, and that's kind of why we have the double header right now because we were both competing, offering competing uh, core conversations. Um, but we, they both got accepted because uh, there's a nice revolution to this. Um, this is my part. I, th I think I was going to go on this one. Okay. Uh, so we had a sprint at, at Nice Camp in New York City. Um, I was invited to come. I was I was strongly encouraged to come because they were getting they really like to get uh, members of the media group together. And I'm not going to lie, I was really hesitant about going. I did not want to go. Because um, we had this, this conflict over storage and just, I've been involved in media so long, I was starting to get really frustrated and like I didn't want to help. Um, and I, was, I was getting close to abandoning the effort. Um, but I, they convinced me to come. Uh, and we had this great group of people here that were there. And we kind of locked ourselves in a little boardroom uh, in the UN. Uh, for an afternoon, and we're like, okay. It was actually quite a good venue for something. Like it was that. a great venue, yeah. <laughs> I, it's a good place to get locked up, but there also is lots of security there. Um, yeah, so that was there are no guns and stuff. That was interesting. Um, so we sat down and we grabbed a whiteboard and we're like, okay, what are the common components that we need? Like, let's let's figure out what we both need. Let's maybe just not agree about how things are stored. They can be files, they can be media entities. Maybe that's a good thing that we don't agree on that because it forces us to find where we can meet our common needs, how, where our UI elements intersect. And we can work on those together. Um, so that's what we did. We're gonna keep working on our two separate storage components. So it's very likely that uh, we'll have file entity and media entity in Drupal 8. We'll see how that goes. Um, so yeah, we're gonna continue with that, but uh, we're going to make sure that uh, we work on these independent parts together uh, as a common goal. Because if we can get them to work for both of our storage parts, they should work for anyone. Uh, and that's kind of what we're, ta we're going with there. Um, and because we're you know, gonna look at it from files or a media entity approach, you should be, use this, be able to use this approach with nodes or anything else you'd like to that's an entity. like. We're setting kind of a lofty goal here. Like the things that we're doing, we want to make available for any entity type. Um, so our embedding component, or what we're calling entity embed, uh, you should be able to embed any kind of entity type uh, in your WYSIWYG field. We're going to solve it for everything. It's, yeah, we're ambitious. Um, and this is a summer of code project. Yes. And sorry, did you want to say that? No, that's good. And it's going very well. I mean, like embedding, it, it already works, basically. We are waiting for a core patch to, to be committed, and it's now basically just the integration with CK Editor and making, making it look and you know, work nice. Like, and just because we're able to take a look at it from the ground up now, like all the problems that we usually have, like I think one of the number one requests we get in the media issue queue is like, I want to embed a link to my file in the WYSIWYG. That's like use case number two. 
and we don't really have a good solution for that at times. We may have it fixed now, but like it works out of the box with this new solution, um, which is really great. Um, we're also going to have an entity browser component. So that's going to be your selection of the entities. Uh, viewing them, uh, the kind of the tabbed interface for do I want to upload or do I want to select or do I want to use a file from the web, um, that's going to be the entity browser. Um, and I kind of had a really fun revelation at, at, in New York that like these individual tabs in the browser, we're doing a lot of work to make those and they're just selecting things. There's existing core functionality that does this. They're called widgets. And why don't we just make anything that gets used in the browser tab, oh, make sure it's available as a widget first, and then we can just easily bring it all together. So it's like having a view of files, you should be able to use that with a file field itself and not using media. Like, and it fo focuses, makes us focus on the usability of each component, each user interface of that. So like the, the upload or web UI where you paste in a URL, that should be a widget you can use on a file field. Um, and it also makes those components reusable outside of the media ecosystem. So you could use that independently if you wanted to on your project. And I think that's a really, really great solution forward. Um, another interesting thing, um, the file entity, the way that you manage file displays, you're like, try YouTube first. And if that doesn't work, try an HTML5 video player first. And then if that falls back, try a generic file link. Like it try has this fallback method. Um, we're actually abstracting that into its own formatter. So you have a formatter that you say, well, try this first. And if that didn't work, try this. And you can manage it right from the manage display screen. And anything else can use this too. Um, so that's just a really nice solution forward as well. Yeah, so uh, we have a roadmap. We don't have like delivery dates yet, um, but it like basically in step one we need WYSIWYG embed uh, do the basic APIs. Namely, you, we need the text filter that converts like this DOM elements with data attributes to the actual rendered node or I mean any entity um, we need an entity browser that like has basic API and a working demo uh, storage components are a crucial part um, and uh, plugins system for these tabs that that uh, Dave mentioned for the browser thing and in step two we have to focus on the UI UX uh, of the embedding module and we're actually already working on that. So we're on step two when it comes to embedding. Um, we hope to have like at least part of step one of Entity Browser done here this week. And when both systems are working, we have to like try to integrate those so you would be able to use Entity Browser to actually select entities which are supposed to be embedded in WYSIWYG. Yeah, because right now it's just like a simple, what type of entity are you embedding? A select box and like type in the ID, which is of course not the ideal thing. We want to make sure that when Entity Browser is available, we use that to select from the entity embedding. So, And uh, when Entity Browser is basically done, then we want to use it to actually create media library. Um, And then on step three, we do more like things that are very nice to have, but not, not crucial for system to work, uh, like multi-upload and uh, display configuration and things like that. And at the end, we then plan to work on third-party integrations, cropping derivatives and other stuff. Um. So this all sounds like a really great plan. And I can see that you're all really enthused about it. Um, but we actually, um, I'm going to pull out the pessimist part of me again. We're going to say hello to him. Yes. Because uh, there's still some challenges that we face in Drupal 8 to make this happen. Um, you know, we're feeling pretty confident we can get this done um, with this plan in place and kind of focusing on the individual parts but allowing them to work together really well. Um, so I just kind of, since this is a core conversation, I wanted to make sure I bring up like, hey, what's still left in Drupal 8 that 
could really help unblock us kind of a thing. Um, so if there's any core developers in the room, this is, is one you should really if especially pay attention to and help us out at the code sprint on Friday. Um, so kind of the big one that I think everyone should kind of pay attention to is how do we manage dependencies for contrib modules? How do we require the plupload library in our module? Um, right now, there's no way for us to manage that. Um, Composer is used for core, but core also includes all the files that it needs. Is contrib going to be able to do that? Because if we're going to focus on making sure that we have those workflows from the start, we need to have those available right away and without any, without any difficulty to download and set them up. Um, so we need to focus on that. Um, there's a really interesting problem in core. I, you may have ta heard Larry or other people talk about like we're decoupling core uh, and all those good terms. But the fact is when you actually try to use stuff that should be de decoupled, it's not. Um, which is kind of an interesting situation with Drupal 8. Um, like our plan to use widgets without actually having a real field uh, in, in the browser, we want to make sure that that actually can, is possible. Um, we've had a real struggle getting formatters to work without a field. Um, saying just given an entity, I want to render it as the entity label, entity reference formatter. Um, there's actually a lot of messy code to get that to work. Um, so there's actually some issues there. Um, and stuff like uh, the links on your node and comments. Um, if you want to hide those when you're embedding a node, you can't actually do that. Um, they're, you can't manage them in the display. They're just always visible. Um, so we want to make sure that things are just nicely done uh, and that kind of stuff. That's kind of more of a higher level one. Um, files in Drupal 8, so this is kind of from the file entity side of things, they lack a proper access controller. Um, so Drupal 8 introduced a new kind of standardized entity access uh, method, but it doesn't actually work for files. Um, so if you try and call those methods, it just returns false, which is great because we want to see our files. Um, so that's an interesting one that we probably are going to be working on on Friday. Um, Probably the most challenging parts I've encountered so far are typed data and plugins. Um, if you have a file with a space in the name, it fails core's validation to be a complete file entity, which is an issue. Um, and you know, say uh, if you have a set of plugins, so like the ways that our entity is rendered uh, using the embedding stuff, uh, you can either pick like you know use a view mode or use a formatter uh, or use a file format or use an image formatter. Um, those are actually all plugins, uh, and it would be nice to have a plugin context system that said, hey, given that I've provided you a node entity, which plugins could work on this? Uh, and there's an issue for that in the core that Tim Plunkett just uh, posted a couple days ago, and that would be nice to have. Um, one of the biggest things that uh, plagued us uh, was one of these core assumptions uh, that if you've uploaded a file to Drupal, used it on a field, and maybe you removed that file and swapped it out for something else, six hours later, Drupal will delete that old file for you, um, which becomes a problem when you want to add the concept of a reusable media framework to Drupal when people's stuff starts to go missing, um, when they know they uploaded it. Um, and this we actually fixed in NiceCamp. So yay, um, we're happy about that. It's no longer a challenge. See, I'm positive for once. <sighs> Don't encourage me. So yeah, now we're going to turn back positive. <laughs> yeah, so um, we have a plan. We hope and believe that you like it. Uh, but there is obviously a lot of work to be done. And uh, we need your help. Uh, if you're interested in media, if you are a web shop that uh, uses media solutions and it's not happy with them and we you want to help us improve it um, you should join us uh, so we need people of all sorts of experience we will need a lot of front-end work because a lot of most of the pub flow part is actually front-end a lot of JavaScript and making these things work we need user experience professionals to advise us about how to design uh, these flows. We also need back-end devs 
project managers. So there, if, if you have interest to help, there is something you, we can give you or you can give us. So don't say, I'm not, I don't have skills for that. I'd actually love to point out, um, typically Drupal core initiatives have what's called an initiative lead who's kind of like the project manager for that initiative that helps drive development, communicate things, um, all those sorts of fun kind of project manage tasks. Um, I have been acting kind of in that role, but I also recognize that I am a developer. So I think we're probably going to look for like someone who can be a good kind of media initiative lead. Um, uh, so if you're interested in that or know someone who might be interested in that, that would be great. Um, yeah, and we definitely want to hear from you. Uh, last week, I I was pinged by Webflow. Uh, he's a Drupal developer from Germany. And he was like, hey, I'm using Entity Embed on a project that's going out like in a few days. And I was like, really? And we had a call, and he showed me how they integrated Entity Embed with WYSIWYG and, and how are they embedding stuff into body. And I was like, wow, this is great. And Wait, you, you mean the Drupal 8 code? Yeah. Oh, OK. Yeah. Wow. Like, <laughs> it's, it's probably already released by now. Um, and I was like, this is great. And we can use most of your code. Can you push this to GitHub? And he said, yes, of course. And then we pinged our student he, that is working on this stuff. And we said, you have code there that basically does what you want to implement. So go there and check it and like maybe refactor, refactor it a little bit. And that's it. So yeah, if you're doing this kind of things, let us know. Because if you'll be hiding your code at home, then we will not improve this. I know at least one of you in this room has probably written their own media like asset management system. And if you have, you should probably talk to us. And another thing that I, that, that I realized by discussing with Webflow was they're actually using Entity Embed to embed non-media entities also. So that proves that a generalized approach that we're taking about supporting all entities is the right way to go. Because, I mean, it works great for them. I don't have stuff recorded. But. Yeah, the, with Entity Embed, anything is that's an entity can be embedded. Anything, blocks, users, taxonomy terms. From the WYSIWYG standpoint, yes, yeah. So there are a few channels where you can get involved. We have a group on GDO. We have uh, weekly Scrum meetings on Hangout. Uh, we announce them on the GDO group. So if you follow that one, you should be fine. Um, there are a few projects. Uh, it's Entity Browser, Entity Embed, Fallback Formatter, Media Entity, Media File Entity. Um, so you can go and check the issue queues. Uh, media Entity is that non-file centric storage component. Uh, it's actually, there is V8 code already, um, and uh, it's also being already used on some sites. So, uh, we are on IRC on uh, Pound Drupal Dash Media. Uh, you can contact us directly, and we will forward you. Uh, you can come help us on Friday Sprint or in Amsterdam, or if you want to organize a sprint, let us know. We will see if somebody from the media team can help, uh, can come and help on site. Otherwise, we can join remotely. Just the most important thing is communicate with us. Let us know what's going on so we can cooperate and uh, use our resources in the most efficient way. And uh, yeah, I think it's time for Q and A. Yeah, well, we'll open up the QA, and then if we have a little bit of time, I can just show a live demo of Entity Embed if anyone wants to see it. And uh, please evaluate this session. Um, if you go to like double-headed session where both of our sessions are listed, uh, pick the first one, which is about media and file entity, 
and uh, evaluate uh, it as a one session, and then we will share results. Yeah, because the, the order of the sessions is not at all who won. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thanks. All right, first question. Uh, uh, for, is this working? Okay. Yep. Uh, first, I want to thank you two and the, and the team in general um, and in the past and all these years that the media module has been in existence. I know it's been a rough road from the other side of the fence wanting to use the module and internally it's interesting to hear that story. So congratulations on, on, on getting through all that and moving forward. Um, I'm very interested in the idea of using the whole uh, editing embed aspect because uh, like this gentleman here mentioned, you know, blocks, we use field collections a mm -hmm. ton. And with the idea of, you know, we really need to be chunking data instead of blobbing, blobbing content, rather, uh, being able to define field collections and all that sorts of things, including, you know, uh, images and, and YouTube videos and all that, and being able to move it around the page within a body field uh, is going to be extremely handy while still, you know, making it pretty simple to keep sites responsive or, you know, multi, multi display friendly. So I just wanted to echo that. And wanted to understand, I know that you're moving forward with this on Drupal 8. I want to understand what possibilities are still are out there for Drupal 7 to make use of some of these things you're doing for 8. Um, well, I, that's a great question. Uh, thank you. Uh, the fallback formatter is actually written for Drupal 7 right now, just because I know that best. Um, but it will be ported to Drupal 8, so that could be used right now. Um, I am thinking that possibly we'll be able to uh, backport entity embed, uh, maybe a more just lightweight solution that doesn't use the entity browser, since that will be a much more manageable effort, or a much more larger effort to backport. Um, I don't see a reason why we can't backport entity embed. Just, it's a matter of time. So, yeah. Yes. Hey, Dave. Hi, Steve. Uh, I've got a question about one of the problems you highlighted, uh, the idea that uh, field formatters can't be used for things other than fields. Uh, one of the themes I've heard around Drupal 8 is encapsulating logic, so the idea that page controllers should do little more than make a call to something else. Uh, form submit functions should do little more than make an API call so that uh, the logic within is not tied to this one implementation. Uh, I'm thinking of this problem of field formatters in a similar way, that field formatters probably shouldn't contain too much logic. So in the case of uh, a file field formatter, that uh, logic for displaying a file should probably in a, be in its own encapsulated area with a field formatter saying little more than, I want this file entity rendered in this way. Are you, do you see the problem the same way? Um, the problem isn't actually in the formatters themselves. Those are actually pretty good. Like, given the right information, like I want to, I'm, I have this entity, I'm giving, I'm giving you it, mm -hmm. and I am giving you this array of configuration which corresponds to the formatter settings. Mm -hmm. Like, that's ideally what it should work with, and I, that should be the ideal way. But it, it requires like typed data listing of the entity mm -hmm. to be passed in and a fake field to be created. Um, of the proper field type. Um, and it's mostly the underlying stuff, not the formatter itself. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, so I, I guess I see this problem as field formatters are maybe the only place where we can do that kind of configuration of display logic. So is there then a need to move that configuration of display logic a layer of abstraction out so that fields are just implementing that rather than making fake fields. I, I would hope so. Okay. I would love that, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Hey. Hi. Thanks again for the presentation and everything you all do. Um, what's the relationship between the media team and Scald? Mm -hmm. um, that's kind of... Yeah. So, um, I've been in touch with Scout guys a lot because just because of the fact that one of the founders of the company that works on this module is based in the same country as I am. He's French, but he moved to Slovenia, so he's regularly participating in our meetups and stuff. And uh, one thing that I I've, I've been really trying to achieve for D8 is like bring all these people together, and it it always up 
it, it always ended up just in a discussion about this storage component, yeah. which is kind of stupid, right? Because it, at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. Because we can probably achieve everything we want with either file entity or media entity. It's, it's more probably more emotional discussion than anything else. Mm -hmm. And um, so they are happy with this approach that we're taking. So basically, media entity goes with the approach that they had in SCALD for storage in D7. And uh, they're helping on, on, on these other components. So I think this breakthrough in New York really helped us to come on the same boat. So, and I'm very enthusiastic about it. Great. Yeah, we had one of the, the Scald maintainers in, in New York City, um, and he's also working on the entity browser component. So, like, it's, it was, it's kind of a, a really good um, benefit of the, of the New York sprint that I didn't see coming into it was getting all these parties involved um, and unified with the same effort because we're wasting a lot of resources, um, like you said, kind of doing all the same thing but doing it differently, just very slightly. So, yeah, it, we're, we're glad to have them on board as long as they will allow it. So, yeah, we will probably still end up having maybe 20% of redundant code, but it, this is much better than 100%. Right. Yeah. Uh, hi there. Um, Right now, I'm working on a name, very large installation of Drupal 7. Um, thousands of sites running on one multi-site setup, and right now we're using Media 1.0. And uh, I've been very, I've been watching the media blockers for 2.0 for the last about year and a half. Mm -hmm. We have it ticket into the let's upgrade to 2.x, but we're going off that. And I'm wondering with what we're talking about today, whether we branching off now to a 3x media with all these changes you're making, or are we still focusing on finishing the 2x blockers? Um, I want to say that we're finishing the 2x blockers and maybe stopping there. Devin, would you kind of agree with that? Yeah. OK. Yeah, so the question is, this this kind of new stuff that we're talking about for Drupal 8, is it going to potentially be a 3x branch for media? And no, probably not. I think by the, by the time we would get ready to do that, we should be spending it on Drupal 8 at that point. So. mentioned that there's at least the uh, entity browser is right now an eight pro project. Mm -hmm. Correct. Be a lot of work to backport to seven. So that would never exist in the seven version of media? Probably not. I don't, I, I mean, I can't predict the future. I don't think any of us will be doing it, but I would encourage anyone who wanted to try to backport it would be more than free to do so because it is open source. So. And la last thing is I'm just wondering, was uh, are there any plans with media to include any kind of Drush integration? Uh, what kind of Drush integration would you want? Well, one little thing, and I, I guess this probably could be done with some kind of PHP eval call, but uh, with what we're working on right now, we actually have about 1,600 sites. Uh, about half of those are on Drupal 5, and we're trying to get them all the way to Drupal 7 using our own migration script. Mm -hmm. And one thing we have to do every time we upgrade a site into the Media 1x branch is you have to manually go to the site and install the media types. Um, I don't know of any kind of drush call to actually say, just figure that out for yourself and then <laughs> just put it into the command line. Got it. Yeah, I think th I don't think that'd be something that would be managed by drush. I could see I could foresee a drush command to import like existing files yeah, exactly. from the file system. Um, so that could be worthwhile. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Hey. Uh, so with the new release cycle for core. You know, and I think Drees might have had like the word media on there for like five seconds in like an eight point two. Well, I totally missed it if he did. Oh, maybe maybe <laughs> I'm wrong. Maybe okay. it was wishful thinking. I was a little far away. But so with the difference between the file entity and the media entity, you really think that those like entity browser and entity uh, what was the other one? Entity embed would yep. be the things that would get into core rather than those other two components for contrib if that was the approach that eventually was taken. I think we could easily see that approach happening. Um, there may be a larger discussion needed for what will get approved for core. Um, but yes, I could see the embedding and the browsing components being added in. Because as, as if we go with this approach where it works for anything, um, you know, they could use the browser component with just the native core upload field um, or just a view of already uploaded files. Mm -hmm. um, so that should be possible. Cool. Yes. Yeah. 
All right, any other questions at all? You just all want to see a demo. Where is the code sprint? Uh, it should be here at the conference center. I'm not exactly sure of the location. They ha said they have a big room for us. That's as much as I know. So I would check the website maybe closer to Friday. Um, and we'll definitely tweet out a, a, a link from either my account or the, the Drupal Media Twitter account f with the location. All right, one more question. Um, I actually was just going to give some more info on that. So um, the volunteers that are going to be available on Friday will help you get set up with an environment if you're new to that. So if you've set up D8 before, you can go right to the big room, find the table with these people, and that'll get you started. Um, if you've never installed D8, find somebody with a gold shirt, and they will help you triage to somewhere that you can get started and set up. Thanks. Cool. Thank you. Um. So I'll just kind of briefly show what's possible here. Yay, core. Uh, all right. So OK, I have a, a test node here with a picture of me snuggling my cat, Rodney. Um, and we have a second node where we are embedding everything. So let's go and edit that, because we can't really see what's going on yet. Um, it's not related to me. Oh, shoot. Um, I might need a rebuild here. Let's just see. <laughs> Hooray. <laughs> Let's fix live code. <laughs> yep, that's what happens. What did I do? Oh, I switched to an old branch. Uh, oh God. File field formatter. There we go. It's fun writing plugins in Drupal 8 code when you don't do it very often. But it's funny because after ever since we had the, the sprint in New York City, um, I've actually been really excited about working with the embedding stuff. And it's kind of been uh, the thing that I've been kind of wanting to make sure we really get done right uh, working with that Summer of Code student. Um, all right, now that we fixed that local issue, um, so we have text above the item embedded entity. I have my embedded node rendered completely with comment form. Um, and I have two small, smaller embeds. Ah. A, a file, which I have used the file link with a caption, and just an image with an image style with a caption. Um, so we'll see how that actually gets embedded here with the actual HTML. And we don't have it visible in the UI of CK Editor yet, but if we view source, um, so really all this is being powered by. Ah, scroll. I want to make sure you can see this. Um, it's just one div powering an entire embed. Um, and all it has is uh, a data entity type node, uh, which says what entity type it is. I have data entity ID for node one. And uh, this is an advanced example here. But if I did data view mode equals teaser, that would render the node with the teaser view mode. And that's all you need. Um, you could also enter in a UUID uh, for the unique ID for that node. Um, internally, it finds node ID and uses the UUID itself. Um, 
apps. And by default, it embeds using the UUID as well. Um, I just use ID because it's easier for me. Um, and if you wanted to add a caption, uh, Drupal core provides this out of the box. If you just add a data caption attribute, it embeds a little caption where you can type in text. Um, and so here we have our, our file link. So uh, entity type file, data entity ID equals one. Uh, and this is the more advanced uh, embedding syntax that uses the plugin type. Um, so we're saying uh, data entity embed display. Um, it's the uh, file entity display plugin, which corresponds to file field formatters, and use the file default formatter, um, which is the link to the file. Uh, and we can kind of see the same thing with the image. Um, it's saying use the image plugin uh, for an em entity embed display and use the default image formatter. Um, and then a second data attribute, data, data entity embed settings, which is a JSON encoded string of settings saying image style use medium. Um, so that's how we encompass the entity embedding. Uh, and this seems to be working extremely well. Uh, I should give a plug out for uh, Jeff Eaton's session, Battle for the Body Field at five today. Um, he'll probably be talking, tomorrow. Uh, it's tomorrow? Tomorrow, okay. Um, uh, Cause he will actually be referencing this as one of the solutions that he loves. Um, so anything that makes Jeff Eaton happy, I'm usually okay with too. Um, so, so yeah, that's how you embed an entity. There's no actual, uh, we're working on the UI to select and stuff, but uh, we're mostly working on this underlying data attribute solution, um, and it seems to be working incredibly well. So any questions about that at all? All just amazed. All right, thank you.